in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the centurion was not a poor man he had money but money could not heal his child he needed a relationship another kind of currency for that child to be saved are we together now yes nicodemus was not a poor man but he needed a relationship to give him enlightenment about the things of the kingdom money is important but in addition to money make sure you get other superior currencies because you will get to realms in life and destiny where everybody has the money you have so you will need to use another kind of currency are you learning already the easiest way to succeed in life i said is through relationships and destiny connections that relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy. I will tell you sincerely, the reason why I'm here standing right now is because of relationships. That is the reason why you are able to hear and receive what God has in store for you. The reason why you will be great in life is because of relationships. If you ignore relationships and ignore connections, you have ignored success in its entirety. Everyone knows that the best time to have strategic relationships is at the level that you are at, that you are now in life because you have the liberty to see people in about the purest form they can ever be. I hope you know that. Most of the people you will meet now they most likely don't have money yet. They most likely don't have influence yet. So the corruption of the day that can turn them into something evil is, is they've not been battered by the evil in life. So you can easily, chances are excellent that if you win at your relationships in this level, they will truly be destiny relationships. Please write this down, everyone. There are three levels of relationships. Or you may call them three kinds of relationships that everyone on earth would require to succeed and to excel there are three kinds and three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships please say after me general relationships one more time say general relationships so the first kind and the first level of relationships is called general relationships for as long as you are alive you will interact with people in your environment you go to the shop or a mall to buy something for the five minutes or ten minutes you are there you will interact with people you could find someone buying the same item you could laugh crack a joke or two and never see the person in your life again if you board an uber or a bolt or a bus within the time the distance of your journey you can have interactions with the person driving you or maybe the bus conductor or maybe a flight you are traveling somewhere within the 50 minutes 45 minutes even if it's 10 13 hours no matter how long within that time you can have a chance to talk with people generally there there is no definite commitment to those relationships it is the lowest level of relationships general relationships but can i tell you the truth every relationship 
no matter how great starts from there that means if you are ineffective in managing your general relationships it will not be able to graduate to the others that i'll be showing you the key to maintaining and managing general relationships is friendliness and honor write it down please the key to managing and maintaining general relationships is friendliness and honor in fact i may want to add discernment because there are times that the greatest gifts in your life will come in forms that you may not easily accept so in addition to friendliness in addition to a, the heart that communicates honor to all men you will also add discernment is someone learning already general relationships now watch this come my friend let me use this man for an example let's assume this man maybe he doesn't know who i am doesn't know anything about me we can be passing somewhere and this this gentleman can see me and just say good afternoon sir not knowing that god has called me and mandated me to help him maybe not even knowing that i have a relationship with his parents but just that act of honor and courtesy i can look at him and say my friend where are you from and begin to find out about him you see that now imagine that this gentleman is looking for admission say for instance in the university and not knowing that i'm the jam registrar for instance or i'm the closest friend to the jam registrar his dishonor to me and not being friendly and just looks at me and pushes me i can leave him in peace and then one day they drag him into a jam center and say we are looking for help and i remember people forget what you tell them but they will not forget how you made them feel they will remember that this gentleman treated me bad and you can recycle needless years of pain is someone learning thank you general relationships you must learn how to be friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown laughing up and down it means to have a warm personality a personality that is always receptive and then to be able to show people honor those who understand honor are never stranded in life and then to discern because most times answers to prayer comes when men come god answers prayer not only by sending power he answers prayer by sending men so while you are praying take note of the man who comes in answer to your prayer your prayer the answer to your prayer could be in a man in fact i teach it this way that all blessings come from god through men to men nothing comes directly from god to a man there must be a man midwifing what leaves heaven and arrives the earth general relationships number two the second level and the second kind of relationships are called seasonal relationships please write it down most believers are ignorant of this level and this kind of relationship seasonal relationships now please look up these are relationships from the name there are relationships in your life that are not meant to be destiny relationships they are there for a season a time and a purpose that means these relationships are time tagged you have to maximize the blessing and the benefit that comes from them within the time allotted because once the time elapses elapses whatever you did not get you may lose forever seasonal relationships i'll give you an example your classmate i'll give you an example your schoolmate there are relationships whose lifespan can be two years three years five years seven years and you may never see them again there are some of you for instance shortly after school or 
shortly after your time in Nigeria, you may relocate and go abroad and certain relationships that you now enjoy, you may never have the opportunity to have and enjoy them again. But the lessons, the wisdom, the benefits and the advantages from those relationships, you can discern and receive them. Most people do not understand seasonal relationships. Now let me tell you something with seasonal relationships. The advantage and the benefit from seasonal relationships only remain within the lifetime of that relationship you must have the courage to know when seasonal relationships have come to an end because if you do not understand when seasonal relationships come to an end what once bless you can also cost you listen carefully and learn many people do not know when seasonal relationships come to an end and they continue to force it to walk to their detriment you have to know when seasonal relationships in your life and destiny come to an end hallelujah this is very powerful i remember many years ago there was this gentleman for some reason i live quite a very busy life honestly but for some reason I saw the text of this gentleman and he showed to be a very sincere person and I reached out to him and when I reached out to him he cried that he this was his background and you know he wanted to learn to know the things of God he was simply looking for a chance to live a meaningful life and I said I can't commit to this gentleman I don't even have the time but I made up my mind I said even if it's two weeks let me give this gentleman dedicated attention and see what I can do to contribute to his destiny and i would give him assignments scriptures to read give him certain sometimes i would call him you know or when he calls me i'll cut when i'm back maybe from a meeting or sometime i'm even praying or studying and here is his call you know i just felt this was an honorable gentleman very respectful as he sounded and he was surprised because i would call him sometimes for over 30 minutes can you imagine and talk with him share get tell him to get a pen and a paper make reference to materials to help him in fact i remember a few times when i even made transfers to him and i said gentlemen go and buy books with this make sure you and he was surprised sometimes he would send the text and say god what have i done and i taught him something i said my friend let me tell you something in as much as i love you don't you think it will continue this way maximize every day and every moment that you will have hallelujah yes and one time the gentleman started calling calling ringing i remember i returned from a meeting i told him to follow everywhere i am meeting and listen to the messages it's part of the mentorship system and one time i remember i was preaching somewhere i didn't save his number but i could see the, the digits and he kept calling while i was on stage he clearly was not following the meeting calling calling and disturbing and writing have i offended you what is this now i thought you are going to help i said oh the seasons you have let me tell you one of the ways you know seasons have come to an end the blessing that maintained it lives. that blessing the listen this is a powerful revelation the blessing that is in it lifts not because you are bad but it is a way of making you know when a baby is in the womb of his mother after nine months the same pregnancy that the woman would dance and be happy about she becomes dissatisfied and even the baby lets her know i'm tired of this place correct the baby now begins to engineer all kinds of skills to force her to tell her madam you have to get me out of this place and let me tell you whether it is by normal delivery or cs that baby will come out for sure now hear me never try to resurrect what god is the one killing this is the mistake that many believers make can i tell you this when a tree is dying 
you can water it to come back to life but when it is dead there is nothing you can do for it to come back to life be careful lest the people who were in your seasonal relationships keep putting pressure on you remember we we're primary school classmates and they keep inconveniencing you crying for a space in your destiny and you keep feeling guilty no you don't have to be evil that relationship was for a season now that the season has ended you must know when to move forward can i tell you this the bible teaches us this seasonal relationships in the journey of abraham please listen carefully the bible says when abraham left he went to go and sacrifice isaac when you read from genesis 22 he went with his servants they started the journey together but when he got to the base of the mountain he turned to them and said gentlemen you have tried for me from here it is only me and my sacrifice that will go upwards did they do wrong they don't have to do wrong he's just saying your season the validity of your contribution has come to an end can i tell you this there are things god will not do with you till you allow relationships that have ended to end indeed there are certain things god cannot do with you and in your life now let me tell you this because of the emotional nature of humans it is usually very difficult it's the reason why many young men cannot leave home when they are supposed to leave home that doesn't mean you stop relating with your parents but you have come of age if you don't leave home you can never be established even if it is one room pack out and go to that one room and start so that you can have a testimony that you will give your children that like my father i also know god is faithful i started with a recharge card and a mattress look what god has done now many people cannot experience more of god because they hold on to seasons that have come to an end is someone learning seasonal relationships in nigeria there are songs that came in certain seasons and everybody sang those songs including you remember how many times you listen to those songs they look like you will never listen to any song again but after a while to your shock you will even hear the song in your car and flip to the next song not because the song is wrong the anointing that came with it with that season has served its purpose every man of god and every champion on earth with respect to destiny our voyage on earth here is a seasonal relationship because one day whether you like it or not like i said yesterday prepared or not your season will come to an end how many of you remember any name called reinhard bonke wave your hands how many of you remember any name called billy graham wave your hands how many of you remember any name called T.L. Osborne? Wave your hands. How many of you remember any name called Sir Isaac Newton? Wave your hands. Question, where are they today? How many of you remember any name in the Bible called Peter, Paul, Silas? You would think that these people their seasons would not end because of the high level impact if christ tarries after 100 years say for instance he will not wait that long i assure you he's coming soon i can assure you this by the authority of scripture we are not going to wait that long before he comes but then say for instance the earth remains for the next 150 years do you know if we don't give birth to anybody again after 150 years even the baby today may be gone the whole earth will be empty because every one season would have come to end remember when you farmed last year you were happy when you saw the maize growing 
and the way you pampered the maize the maize um, you know the, the the stock it was as if it would live forever and all that pampering was just for four months the day you were harvesting it you did not even pity what you once pampered you removed the corn and matched everything and that was it ready for another planting season you must understand seasons the key to maximizing seasons even seasonal relationships is to discern and to take advantage of the blessing and the benefit listen look up let me teach you something there are some of you who grew up with aunties and grew up with uncles some of you grew up in families that may not have treated you well some of you are even working jobs you don't like and you are wondering why God put you there realize that you are there for a season instead of complaining the stopwatch is, is, is counting down you may be there with your auntie and your uncle staying with them they may not have treated you well but God is using that season to build stamina in you so that you can survive any other thing in the future instead of complaining and getting angry discern the season because one day what you are running away from today you will miss it when the season passes i would always give this example have you seen little children who want to be adults by force you come back and you find them trying to act like mommy they will carry mommy's cloth and wear and it's flowing as if they are an angel and they are happy sometimes they try to do what daddy is doing and may god not help you that your child finds a car key and goes to open the car and his leg is struggling to touch everything and he's just doing whatever he can do because he thinks the seasons are too slow he will wake up and find out that he's 50 years old and miss those days and wish he could go back an example of what i'm talking about is you who would believe that you have come this far i had the privilege to see um, one of my dear people who trained me growing up and my goodness he was an old man i saw one of my pictures one time and i couldn't believe it i said this is a joke you mean i've grown like this where am i running to But what you do with seasons is what determines whether you will go far or you will remain where you are. Is God teaching someone now? So a quick recap that there are three levels and three kinds of relationships. Number one is what? General relationships. Your interaction with your environment every day. Number two, seasonal relationships. Number three, the highest level of relationship and this is the one that lasts throughout the lifetime of your destiny they are called destiny or covenant relationships please write it down destiny or covenant relationships hmm. what are these relationships they are relationships that have a role to play in your life all through your lifetime for as long as you are alive those relationships should remain and these are the relationships that you should pay any price under god to maintain because something about the overall picture of your destiny is connected to those relationships is god speaking to someone an example of destiny relationships is your prophetic connection an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your parents an example of destiny relationships your relationship with your spouse your relationship with your children and then your relationship with strategic friends connections mentors that god brings to your life war betides a man who does not invest in destiny relationships you may never be able to actualize destiny 
I want to say something respectfully speaking. When you see people in old age, isolated, frustrated, with no help whatsoever, some of them will give excuses like, I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. I'm sorry, but I disagree. It does not take education to invest in relationships. It takes honor, discernment, and humility. How can God give you a gift of 40 years, 30 years, 50 years, and there is nobody on earth who found you relevant enough to connect with you for destiny? You must be a dangerous person then. Someone somewhere should like you enough and be willing to say, I believe in you and I see you an advantage to my life. This place is quiet. I'm sure God is speaking to you now. Because some of you are about to destroy destiny relationships. Some of you, that classmate you met is not just a classmate. There is something connected to destiny. For some of you, this ministry that God brought you is not just an option just because you are looking. It is destiny connection. Now, let me show you what happens when we do not discern destiny relationships. Are you ready? Genesis 13. Let's continue from where we left off. We'll start from verse 7. Remember the story. God called Abraham and Lot went with him. God prospered Abraham and God prospered Lot who went with him. But something started happening. Pay attention to my message now. The Spirit of God is speaking. There was a strife between the headmen of, Abraham, of Adam's cattle, of Abraham's cattle, and the headmen of Lot's cattle. Can you imagine? Both the one who carried the promise and the covenant and the one who followed became so blessed. But with every blessing and with every lifting, there are always issues. The Bible says, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Next verse. Verse 8 says, and Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Please follow carefully. I pray thee between me and thee. He said, I'm between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. Why? For we be brethren. Verse 9. He said, it's not the whole land before thee. Separate yourself. Ah. Now there is a problem. You know what Abraham was telling Lot? It seems like now you don't even know why God blessed you. Because you followed me. You partook of the grace upon my life. Now you have increased and you did not mentor and train your people to know why God blessed them. That it was a destiny connection that brought the blessing. Let there be no strife. Go. He said, separate yourself. You never allow this to happen over destiny relationships. This may happen for general relationships. This may happen for seasonal relationships. But when it has to do with destiny relationships, swallow your pride. Because we are about to learn a lesson from Lot now. Are you ready? Please give it to us. Separate yourself, Abraham told Lot. I pray thee from me. If thou will take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou will depart to the right, I will take the left. Abraham was telling him, it does not matter the location. What is on me will sort me out. But you choose any direction and go. Now watch the foolishness of Lot. Which is the foolishness of many people on earth today. God has brought you to this camp. To give you wisdom for destiny. The Bible says. And Lot lifted his eyes. And beheld all the plain of Jordan. That... It was well watered where before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the garden of Eden, as thou comest unto Zohar. Hey. Then Lord shows him all the plain of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east 
and they separated themselves one from the other now follow carefully abraham dwelt in the land of canaan where did lord go to help me lord dwelt in the city of the plain and pitched his tent towards sodom this is what separation from destiny relationships can bring the first decision that lord will be taking outside of that relationship landed him in sodom can i tell you this there are relationships god brought you to because he knows that if you take certain decisions without those relationships what happened to your father will still happen to you god brought you to certain relationships as a covenant binding so that you can be a partaker of certain blessings that are on men this is true lot went unfortunately to sodom question by the time abraham came to rescue lot where did he find lot he did not find him at the gate of sodom lot had moved in moved in and he was at the center of sodom even though he remained a righteous man but there was still trouble because if you are righteous and your environment is polluted you will still suffer it is someone learning god connected you to a friend that friend was the one who helps you pray that friend was the one who helps you fast every time you are backsliding god will show that friend in a dream and you say my brother i had this dream i just noticed that is, is there something wrong with your spiritual life let me tell you what satan does to people when he wants to destroy them please look up and learn the first thing satan does when he wants to attack your destiny is to look for everybody who can help you when you are down he will create trouble between you and them so that all of them will leave you when you are alone in pride he will now attack you because anybody who can help you there is no peace between you for the rescue this is how people die and this is how people are destroyed satan will never attack you when he knows you are surrounded by destiny relationships the first thing he will do is to surround you with wrong people or take away good people from your life lord would have said abraham i know there is strife between my people and your people please let me talk to them i can't let you go because i remember what i was and where i was before god brought me to you i believe it's a destiny connection my apologies let me work on it only god knows what else would have learned about lot destiny relationships there are doors today that have been opened in my life to my life as a person and in ministry because of destiny strategic destiny relationships and by the privilege of God's grace God has used me through destiny connections to also open doors for others many of you here respectfully are about to get crash your life because you don't have value for anybody you have a narrative in your life i don't need anybody to hell with you you can go be careful who you are driving away from your life you may drive one man that is equal to the next 10 years of your peace Go and find out what happened to the disciples when they ran away from Jesus. Jesus is not the kind of person you run away from. But they ran away. And within 72 hours, their whole life scattered. Peter that was gaining relevance. In 72 hours, Peter went back to fishing and was wasting his time there. When Jesus came in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? He didn't even know it was Jesus. He said cast your net to the right side when he casted his net as soon as jesus returned to his life in one statement he caught fish that he had been struggling and he did not catch 
Is someone learning? Before I continue, please lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, give me the discernment to know the relationships that my destiny depend on. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Grant me that grace so that I don't use foolishness or pride or lack of discernment and destroy valuable relationships that can hold the key to many, 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 many chapters of my life. hallelujah hallelujah now very quickly i'll read a scripture and i will show you how to maintain destiny relationships and will be done genesis 21 For someone when your life changes and people ask you you will tell them i came for this student congress and i found something i found a key hallelujah now for sake of time i will save you a lot of details genesis 21 let's start from verse 8. this was a story between abraham and his wife Sarah and a maid called Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. Please follow very carefully. Let's start from verse 8. Now, speaking about, remember when Sarah could not bear a child. Are we together now? Abraham now had a child with Hagar, and the Bible says something that Hagar was Sarah's maid. But the moment she had a child, and she saw that she was now in a position of advantage something began to happen she started mocking and acting funny towards sarah and in anger sarah banished her and said go abraham said you can do with her whatever you want so this is a story you are about to learn verse 8 very quickly and the child grew and was weaned and abraham made a feast the same day that isaac was weaned uh-huh and sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian. Now God had given her her own, which was born unto Abraham. He said, wherefore, she said unto Abraham, verse 10, cast out this born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac, verse 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Now watch this. And God said to Abraham, let not it be grievous in your sight because of the lad and because of the born woman. In all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for Isaac shall be thy seed, shall thy seed be called. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He says, and also the son of the born woman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, watch this now, and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, uh -huh, and sent her away. And she departed and did what? Wandered in the wilderness. She came to that house as a maid. By reason of all that happened, regardless what happened, God lifted her and sorted her. Now she separated and wandered around the wilderness, even to Beersheba. Next verse. The Bible says, And when the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs, uh -huh, and she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot for she said let me not see the death of the child and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept now the lesson begins and god heard the voice of the lad 
And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Now watch this. He said, Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Next verse. And the Bible says, And God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and he became an archer. And he dwelt in all of that and all of that. Now, when you read that scripture, let me tell you what I'm trying to pull out. The Bible said something very instructive that both Hagar and the baby, two of them were crying. But the Bible says when God heard, he had only the voice of the baby. The Bible never said he had the voice of Sarah, of um, Hagar. How come she was crying and the baby was crying and only the voice of one child went to heaven? You know why? Because even though she was in rebellion, she had left her maid. That baby that came out of her was still connected to that blessing by covenant. And because of that covenant, God could not deny the child, even though the mother of the child was in rebellion. He cried, she cried. God only had the voice of one child. Notice, God did not even say anything to solve her problem. Why are you crying? Hold the child. I want to speak about the child. And that's it. How can I be crying? And a baby is crying. And God hears the, the cry of the child. And comes and acts as if I am not there. Gave her water. And now focus on speaking about the child. Because he was connected to Abraham. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.